Hi everyone, my name is Lauren. I'm an ICU nurse and I enjoy helping people understand physiology and pharmacology and I really like giving you guys memory tricks to help remember these um, values and drugs um, so that you can remember them for an exam or use them in practice. So some of you commented that you wanted to see some more videos about lab values and how to remember them. So I'm going to do a series on ABGs, arterial blood gases. Um, and this first video is going to be about um, the actual values that you look at in an ABG and how to remember those numbers. So the first value you look at in an ABG is your pH. So normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. And that's really helpful because a lot of labs um, have this 35 to 45 in them. So it makes it easier um, for us to remember. So 7.35 to 7.45 is a normal pH. A normal PaCO2, which is the partial pressure of CO2 in your blood, is 35 to 45. So again, we see 35 and 45. 7.35 to 7.45, 35 to 45. So other labs have 35 to 45 in them. I'm going to put them over here in case you need help memorizing them as well. So sodium, serum sodium, normal is 135 to 145. Um, a normal end tidal CO2 is 35 to 45. Um, a normal serum potassium level, the low end is 3.5 so that's kind of like 35 and the top is 5.1 so other labs that also have 35 to 45 in them so back to abgs here after um pacio2 we have hco3 minus which is bicarbonate so normal bicarbonate value is 22 to 26 And the way I remember that is that 22 to 26 is the age at which you can buy a lot of carbs, buy carb in it. And the reason for that is that 22 is about the age where if you went straight from high school to college, maybe nursing school, you're graduating. So you're graduating college, you're living on your own for the first time, um, and you can go to the grocery store and buy whatever you want. So 22 to 26 is the age where not only do you have freedom for the first time and money, um, but you also have a very fast metabolism. So you can go and buy carbs all the time. After 26, your metabolism slows down. Um, and you don't want to buy as many carbs anymore. You want to think about buying things like vegetables and things that are good for you. Um, so 22 to 26 uh, is the value for bicarbonate because you buy a lot of carbs. SAO2 stands for oxygen saturation, and that's your pulse ox. So you all probably know that 90 to 100 percent is a normal pulse ox reading. So let's talk a little bit about how oxygen is carried in your blood. Um, oxygen, when you breathe in, it diffuses from your lungs into your bloodstream and it binds to hemoglobin. It's about 97% of the oxygen that you breathe in um, and gets transferred to your blood is bound to hemoglobin. So your pulse ox, your O2 sat is the percentage of oxygen, or the percentage of hemoglobin that has oxygen attached to it. So about the other 3% of the oxygen is dissolved in plasma. And that's where we get your PaO2. It's the partial pressure of oxygen dissolved in your plasma. And a normal value for that is 80 to 100. So my trick for remembering that is this little table here to help associate PaO2 and SaO2. So here I have your PaO2, partial pressure of oxygen in your plasma, and that's your ABG reading. Get that off of your ABG. And then over here we have SAO2, which is your pulse ox. Or your hemoglobin reading. So I remember 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So we have 40, 50, 60 on this side and 70, 80, 90 over here. So if you remember that, you can remember how to compare any PaO2 value to your SaO2. 
so any ABG oxygen level to your pulse ox oxygen level. So a PaO2 on your ABG of 40 is going to relate to a pulse ox number of about 70. Um, a PaO2 of 60 is going to compare to an SaO2 of 90. Um, and this is all on a curve, so after um, about 80 here, 80 corresponds to maybe 91 or 92 percent. Um, 80 to 100 then is going to be about 92 to 100 percent on your pulse ox. So that way if someone tells you an ABG result verbally, maybe when you're at work and says their PaO2 was 52, um, you can sort of do the math here and say, okay, their SaO2 was 80 something, um, which is not acceptable. So that's ABG numbers and how to remember them. Um, comment below and let me know if you have any questions, if you found this helpful, and if you have any ideas for future videos. Um, I'm going to do in this ABG series, uh, the next video I'm going to talk about how to interpret ABGs, and then I'll do another video on the chemistry behind uh, arterial blood gas readings, uh, a little more in-depth view if you're interested in that or if that helps you remember um, the blood gas interpretations. Um, so thanks for watching. I'd also like to give a shout out to allnurses.com for their encouragement and for helping me share my videos.